but West Ham finally made amends when they landed the winner in the 68th minute. Kevin Keane applied the finish, and with leaders Newcastle involved in the FA Cup, the Hammers have succeeded in putting the Geordies lead at the top to four points. The stage was all set for a crucial showdown with the men from St James's Park, in front of live television cameras and the highest gate of the season, an Upton Park crowd of more than 24,000. in the end turning it back to Sernicek but again the flag is up oh they didn't wow Benison didn't realise the ball was being played to him Keane now knocking the ball in Martin Allen came off the goalkeeper's legs still not away yet Dick's playing it in once more Robson on the far side with the header Morley trying to make something of it and in the end it's into the goalkeeper's hands but what a that was by Newcastle United. It's a fitting sight. Julian Dix coming forward with that sort of pace. But Martin Allen up there with him now. Dix again going in there with a block challenge. The ball calling for Kevin Keane and now for Martin Allen. Oh, lovely. Tipped away there beautifully by Cernicek. A real tantalising, curling shot there from Martin Allen. That would have just crept in under the crossbar. Three days later, on the 24th of February, Oakton Park became the focal point for the news that would leave the world of soccer mourning one of its finest ever ambassadors. Bobby Moore, the greatest hammer of all time, had lost his two-year battle against cancer. The news of Bobby's death at the age of 51 was greeted by overwhelming sadness in every corner of the world. As, as far as his captaincy went, I mean, Bob, but more than uh, led by ideals, led by example. I mean, he, w he was a, a great footballer, we all know that. Whatever anybody says about football, his, his football is true. There's only two defenders that reign superior in this world since the game began and that's Bobby Moore and Franz Beckenbauer. Now you can argue whatever way you want as to who was the greatest. Um, I suppose if you're a German they'll say Beckenbauer, if you're English we'll say Bobby Moore. Uh, but they're head and shoulders above anybody else that ever played the game defensively. Of course uh, I feel very sad, uh, I feel sorry sometimes because it's very hard when you, 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 know, you know you lost a good friend, you, lo you lost a, a nice uh, person like uh, Bob Moore. And then, uh, in my position, it's, uh, I think, worse than anyone because besides to play with him, to play against him, we were a very good friend outside of the field. Then uh, I feel very sorry, but uh, what I can do? He has a reputation. Uh, not only in England, but uh, also around the world, and, and also in Germany. He, he was, uh, you know, an expression for, uh, for a gentleman. He was always very charming, very nice, very helpful. He was a great player. He played more than 100 uh, times for the English national team. So he was, um, he was an idol. Everyone knew the memory of Bobby Moore would live on forever in the hearts and minds of soccer fans around the globe. Meanwhile, for the modern-day Hammers came the task of carrying on with a league match at Sunderland. On a day of national mourning, the contest in front of a tearful crowd of just over 19,000 at Roca Park was predictably overshadowed by emotions. The result was countless tributes, but no goals. The day of mourning had ended with honours even. Meanwhile, Upton Park was being turned into a shrine. Scarves, souvenirs and countless mementos that clearly came from prized personal collections formed a poignant epitaph for West Ham's favourite son. The grief was shared by young and old alike and they turned up in their thousands to pay their last respects. Well, I remember him playing uh, in the 1934 Cup Final and uh, you know, the World Cup Final obviously was the uh, highlight of everybody's uh, thoughts about football and Bobby Moore. 
he epitomised everything about football. No one can ever say a bad word against him. I'm sorry, I'm a bit choked now. Like, you know. Classic player, big netter, proper player. In fact, uh, your own personal memory of him. My little lad's playing for Manchester boys, so they. That's why he's not here. And he plays number six. <coughs> what can you say? Good. What do you think about the fans' tribute here? What can you say about East and EastEnders? You know, it's all been said. Brilliant. That's why we come down here every week. Yeah, how far do you travel from? Manchester. All the way every yeah, week? Yeah, every week. Home and away. And you travelled. Have you got yeah, a particular the lot. memory of uh, Bobby Moore? Bobby Moore, yeah. The way he used to get the ball off people, stand back, wait for him to come at him, and then just take it away. You know, and people said he, he didn't have pace. It's, uh, they've all said it, haven't they? He didn't have pace, he didn't need it, he had class. I can't really put it into words, really. Bobby Moore was West Ham, a part of West Ham has died, not just Bobby Moore. It was ten days after Bobby Moore had died before the Hammers staged their first match at Upton Park against Wolverhampton Wanderers. The ceremony that preceded the game began when old teammates Jeff Hurst and Martin Peters carried out a king-size wreath in front of a full house of nearly 25,000 people. In his lifetime, Bobby Moore had been a personality who demanded the ultimate respect. This was a chance for supporters, players and former colleagues to say farewell in a moving final tribute. It was an emotional day when the...